Hey, I'm Scott, and this is the simplest way to shoot Holy Girl time lapses just like these. And the best part is we get to sit back and relax the entire time. So before we get started, what is a Holy Girl time lapse? It's basically just a term for shooting a scene where it changes from day to night or from night to day. It's coined Holy Girl because back in the day, this used to be hard as hell to do and get results that weren't trash. The first step I want us to do is to choose a subject. Tip number one is what makes a good time lapse? Not everything needs to be a time lapse, especially a holy girl time lapse. So if we're gonna invest that much time into one short video, we better plan it out first. A good holy girl time lapse should have good composition, something moving in the scene, and as much activation or change as possible. For composition, I find the simple rule of thirds helpful. For scenes where the sky is looking relatively boring, place the sky on the upper one third of the horizontal line. And for holy girl scenes where the sky looks amazing, use the bottom third horizontal line, so that way the sky takes up two thirds of the screen. And try to place the points of interest on one of the thirds as well. This is just gonna make the shot a little more interesting. Look for things like symmetry or reflections when possible. And so when you're looking at the scene, ask yourself, is there movement? If nothing is moving in the scene, then nothing is gonna be moving in your finished time lapse, and it might as well have just been a photo. The whole point of a time lapse is to show movement. Lastly is activation, and what I mean by activation is just little details that you know will turn on or off. For example, lights turning on or off, lights changing colors, cars coming into the scene that emit lights after dusk. Another thing I refer to as activation is just little scenes where people are doing things. They could be waiting in line, playing at the park, walking around, ice skating, you get the point. Before we get into the camera settings, there's one thing that's gonna have a huge impact on the final part of your video. It's called an interval. An interval is the amount of time that takes place between each photo. If I have a one second interval, it means I'm taking a photo every second. If I have a 10 second interval, it means I'm taking a photo every 10 seconds. That's important because the faster your interval is, like one second fast, the slower the movement will appear in your video because you have more photos. Meanwhile, the slower your interval, like 10 seconds between each photo slow, the faster your video will play because there's less photos in to fill those gaps. So if you're just beginning and you're not sure what to do shooting a holy grail, I recommend starting with a 10 second interval. Don't overthink it, just start there. So since we wanna do this as simply and easily as possible, we're gonna to wanna to put our camera in aperture priority mode. This is a semi-automatic mode that's gonna allow our camera to change all the settings for us while we shoot. This is 50% of the work done right here, but there's a few simple settings that we can add to make sure we get even better results. So I'm using the Sony a7R 3 but most cameras can do all of these features nowadays. And if yours can't, don't worry, I'm gonna show you an alternative version. So we put our camera in aperture priority mode. Now we're gonna go into our intervalometer and choose our settings. So on my camera, I have an interval shooting function that has all of my time-lapse settings. If you don't have this, don't worry, because you can buy an intervalometer for just $20 off Amazon. So I wanna make sure that it's on and then it shows up that I have a shoot start time. This is how many seconds I want to take until my time lapse begins. Then I have the interval and I'm going to do five seconds just because I want to show you the difference between the impact of a five second interval. But if I also delete every other photo afterwards, it's going to be a 10 second interval and we'll play them back to back. So that way I can help you visualize what that looks like and you can see the difference right here. All right, next is gonna be the number of shots. For Holy Grails, we wanna shoot at least one hour before and one hour after the sun rises or sets. This means that the minimum shooting time is gonna be two hours. And that's why I'm choosing 1600 photos because it gives me just over two hours. Then we have an option for AE tracking sensitivity. This is something that not all cameras are gonna have, but we do on the Sony and it's very helpful. Basically this setting, all of the cameras asking is, hey, how reactive do you want me to be to changes in light? If you don't have this, the best thing you can do is make sure your meter mode is on center. It's a nice to have, not a must have. Lights might turn on, things like cars moving in and out of the frame with their light trails. So I tend to find that I like this on low, so that's what I would recommend. We have two final options. Silent shooting mode, which is great if you're in a place that you wanna be quiet, like a church, and you don't wanna be annoying. And lastly, a nice feature is the interval priority. I'll turn that on because time lapses are shooting scenes that are changing. Sometimes, maybe a cloud will come over and it'll get really dark for just a photo. And this could make our exposure time longer than our interval. Without this feature, the interval may come and go. And since the camera was still taking the photo, we might miss the shot, creating an unwanted jump just like that. This neat little feature is gonna make sure it doesn't happen. It's gonna give priority to whatever the interval is. Already, we're at 95% of the way to shooting easy Holy Grail time lapses with no effort. There's just a couple last settings I want us to focus on, and that is gonna be our camera's noise reduction feature. We wanna 
navigate to this and turn it off. Noise reduction has the ability to interfere with our interval as well. Basically, when you're taking a photo, it's gonna take just as long to read it and then get rid of the noise. And since we're doing long exposures, we shouldn't be having too much noise anyway. And it can also be done in post. And the last thing we wanna do is find our focus. Right before we start our time lapse, we wanna make sure that we find focus and then turn off our autofocus. If we leave it on, our camera is gonna be hunting for focus between each shot and create really distracting jumps in focus that is gonna make our image look blurry here and there. And it's just gonna be really jarring and can ruin our shot. All right, that's it. Now we just gotta press the shutter button and we are good to go. All right, well that is how you shoot a Holy Grail time lapse. Say hi, Fratasha. You can't hear her, but she's saying, please like and subscribe to this video. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful and you want to level up your skills so you can save time, have less headaches, expand your skills, and most importantly, charge more money, my time-lapse course will help you with all three and comes with a free money-back guarantee if you aren't satisfied. At the very least, do me a favor and like or subscribe. Happy shooting, and I'll see you next time.